Welcome for this practice. I'm going to be illustrating how to move through a couple of blowing off techniques to get to exhale pause, exhale suspension into Uddiyana Bandha. In this particular course that the students are participating in, they're learning right now about the five values. And this class will highlight Apana Vayu, Samana Vayu, and then Vyana Vayu. We're learning also how to do Uddiyana Bandha. And so there's going to be a stepping stone approach for that in this practice. Thanks for joining us, and I'll see you in the practice. Oh, before we get started, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please do so. That helps us to keep offering content to you and to others who are coming here to learn about the authentic tradition of yoga. Thank you. See you there. Welcome for morning practice. We're going to be diving into the experience again of exhale pause to exhale suspension into more of the full Uddiyana Bandha experience. That is something that's quite powerful, and it's helpful to have the developmental stages of getting there. We're also going to be emphasizing how we move then towards Vyana Vayu, how we go from Apana Vayu to Samana Vayu to Vyana Vayu. So let's take a comfortable seat. And you can rest your hands in your lap. Allow your eyes to close. Lengthen up through your spine. Relax your shoulder blades and the hinge of your jaw. As you find yourself arriving, <clears throat> excuse me, as you find yourself arriving, there is a process of arriving. You can imagine it as the innermost self is magnetically pulling you back to the present. So that Anandamaya Kosha, which is your central causal kosha, imagine that you're returning to that. And sometimes it may feel to you like you're coming through the Earth's gravitational field as if you've been in the outer space on the space shuttle. You're gonna come through the physical body, the energy body, the mental body, the inner wisdom, and then back home. And when you arrive in that place that I'm calling home, you may recognize that home has not left you. Perhaps you are the one coming and going. But now let's arrive and try to stay at home in that Anandamaya Kosha. So welcome your breathing to drop down lower than your solar plexus, lower than your belly button. So the inhale has a deep beginning at the base of the pelvis. And that is from the diaphragm drawing down to bring the oxygen into your lungs. And as the diaphragm pulls down, there is an appropriate pressure against the pelvic floor and an appropriate expansion of the lower abdomen and then into the sides, back and front of the torso. Begin the exhale also from the base of your pelvis. You could imagine that during the exhale, the bony landmarks of the base of the pelvis, they come gently towards each other. That'll be your two sitting bones, your tailbone, the pubic bones. And picture that tone then moving up the front of your spine incrementally.
If you sense that the breath is moving smoothly and your inhale and exhale are relatively balanced, then begin to apply the ujjayi breath. But don't do it if the breath, you feel like you're trying to coerce it or bringing it, bring it into some kind of obedience. Once the inhale and exhale feel smooth and balanced, add this ujjayi, which is a focusing of the breath by hollowing the back of the throat as you do when you're yawning or whispering. And that'll create a kind of tone for the inhale and the exhale that has a gentle whispering sound. As you bring the ujjayi breath into focus, now begin deliberately matching your inhale with your exhale, which means you are kind of chaperoning the pace of the inhale and the pace of the exhale. As you're balancing the inhale with the exhale, remind yourself that the more subtle the ujjayi breath, the more powerful it is. So you can consider any way in which you're over-efforting to create the whispering sound. And see if you can modify that effort to be more harmonious within your capacity right now. At the end of your next ujjayi exhale, release that practice and sit in the quiet reflection of whatever is occurring, like sound in your environment, sensation in your body, maybe some thoughts going by. When you sit in the reflection, notice the degree to which you don't like over identify with the sound, the sensation, the thought. Perhaps there's a little sense of space between those occurrences and your sense of yourself. With appreciation for the chance to come to your practice, please raise your hand to your heart. Om Sanavatu Sanavatu Saviryang Karava Tejas vinavadhi tamastu Mori beshavati Om sahana Sahana Om 
Exhale, you may bow your head to your heart and release your hands and open your eyes. So something very important there that I was pointing at is after even a short time of pranayama or mindfulness or centering, we can ask the students to let go of the practice, the tool, as it were and then to rest in whatever's occurring. And what's really important about the next thing that I was sharing is, can they notice any sense of space between whatever's occurring and their ability to observe it? That space being not a place of aloof detachment, but a, a place of being able to witness or observe with a full-hearted appreciation for what's happening, but not being overtaken by what's happening. So less reactivity or merging with whatever's happening. And that is the aim really of pranayama meditation and asana is to loosen that over identification with whatever is going on so that the space allows us then to tend to what is necessary to tend to, whether that's a mental health or physical health symptom. If we're merged with the experience, if we're Kind of really identified with it. Our nose is against the stained glass window. This is how close it is. It's very hard to see the thing, whatever it might be. It's hard to see it clearly. And then it's difficult to know what kind of wisdom to apply to it. So we can end up in a way thrashing about in our symptoms if we don't have that sense of space to observe. So what we're going to do here is the beginning of, let me set my tea mug down. The beginning of exhale pause into this kind of um, lovely emptiness where you're not making an effort, the breath is happening for you. So to get there, we're gonna use five strong exhales flowing out through the mouth, one long exhale, and we'll inhale and hold the breath for a few moments. On the exhale, we're gonna take it steady. And then at the end of the exhale, totally relax and allow the next breath to come in. Don't prevent it, allow it to come like a breeze coming through a window, okay? So like this. Breathe in through both nostrils. Suspend for a few moments, inhale suspension. Release the suspension and exhale smoothly and slowly. And then totally relax and receive the next inhale.
Okay, let's repeat that. So that receiving moment is like the wave has come to the shore. There's a moment where it's like lingering and then it's just drawn back to the ocean. And the ocean is almost like pulling that wave back to it. In this case, your body just brings the next breath in. You don't have to make it happen. I just really want to encourage you to totally relax and to receive that breath. Okay, like this. Breathe in through both nostrils. Suspend the inhale. Exhale deliberately. Deeply relax. Notice any sense of space that you've created between your experiences and your ability to witness those. Okay, now we'll try it with a little bit more rapid exhale. This is like exhale, 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 exhale. Out through the nose called Kapalabhati. The practice we just did is a variation on Bastrika. This is called Kapalabhati. We'll do it rapidly. You're just focusing on the exhale. Whatever in-breath your body needs, it comes in the vacuum of the exhale, exhale, exhale. And then we will again inhale to suspension, exhale to release. Okay, so close your eyes. Exhale completely through the nose. Inhale slowly to suspension. Release the suspension slowly and deliberately exhale to the end. And then totally relax the exhale muscles. Receive the next inhale. And then the next one, right? <clears throat> okay, let's repeat that experience. So in your own readiness. Exhale completely. Inhale to suspension.
release the suspension and exhale in your own timing. At the end of the exhale, again, use the exhale muscles and then totally relax them to receive the next inhale. Now, appreciating whatever space you're able to access, um, spaciousness, expansiveness, stillness, whatever that is. We're going to transition to a practice where we squeeze the low belly, and then we'll be releasing that squeeze without inhaling. To illustrate this for you, I'm going to move back to my seat on my mat. So in that transition, I'll take back with me the microphone and all the things that I take with me. So from the practices of Kapalabhati and that variation on Vastrika, what we're really focusing on there is Samana Vayu, the middle Vayu here, which is about digestion. Let's now go down to Apana Vayu. So when we do this practice, we're going to be exhaling and folding forward. And in the fold forward, you're going to use the deep low belly muscles down above the pubic bone. We won't be using our hands to brace ourselves as we fold forward. So it's going to be a different kind of forward bend. Your hands will be at the small of your back. That means that you have to use the abdominal muscles to come down. At the bottom of that exhale squeeze, we'll have squeezed the breath out. And then we're going to totally relax those exhale muscles. And without inhaling, we'll just experience the suction that is there. It's kind of waiting for us there. So if you'll take the hands of the small of the back and just do one little test drive, and that is when you come forward, does your head reach the floor comfortably? And if it doesn't reach the floor comfortably for any reason, you can place an extra bolster, a block, a blanket, a well-behaved dog, whatever you need to have there for your forehead to be on. My head is not comfortably reaching right now. I think excessive gardening is one of the implications excessive gardening or just the right amount of gardening in a large space that needed tending. So um, place your hands at the small of your back and let's inhale using the ujjayi breath. And then exhale and come forward slowly. You're going to want your head supported as you squeeze the breath out. At the end of the exhale, without inhaling, totally relax the exhale muscles. In your own timing, inhale to rise back up to sitting. And then you have the option there when you come back up to either continue directly with the next breath or to wait until you feel like you've acclimated, that you're not gonna be breathless. Okay, I'd like us to try it five times all together. So um, five times total. I don't mean simultaneously when I say all together, five times total. And that means that you might be going down, experiencing, coming up, recalibrating, going down, experiencing, coming up, recalibrating, or you might go sequentially. Okay, so breathing in.
but no point should you make yourself feel breathless. Always chaperone yourself with kindness and respect. When you complete five times, then rest your hands in your lap. This practice is called Kormasana or Korma Mudra. It's a way of squeezing out the exhale using the forward bend. So we're really down low in the Apana Vayu. Now we're going to do this from Vajrasana. So we come to kneeling. When you bow forward in kneeling, the two fists go in the low belly that as you're coming down, you do have this pressure against the lower abdomen. And so it's worth saying, it's contraindicated if you're pregnant, if you're having your menstrual cycle, you can be thoughtful if you have uterine fibroids, you know, these are considerations. As we're coming down, the pressure of the fists in the low belly is to help facilitate the inner experience of that apana vayu and moving towards what's going to be again, exhale, suspension. So we'll go down, we'll squeeze the breath out, and then we're gonna totally relax the exhale muscles without inhaling. And then we will tone the belly, inhale to come back up. Let's try it five times. Here's the first one, breathe in. And exhale, fold forward. Of course, you inhale to rise in your own timing. Always go with respect and kindness for the body. It's not worth it to compete or to pressure yourself in pranayama.
when you've completed five times and rest in quiet. Notice again any bit of space or um, acceptance or graciousness you might have towards thoughts, sensations, sounds, whatever is happening. So now we're going to move to a position where your torso is a little bit inverted. And this is, we call this prasarata padottanasana. Sometimes I call it pyramid pose, the wide leg stance with a forward bend. The purpose of having that slight inversion is that as we have this um, downward angle, the organs in the pelvis and the abdomen move off of the pelvic floor. So there's less pressure in the abdomen or the pelvic floor. So again, you're gonna exhale as completely as you can. And then after the exhale, you'll have squeezed the low belly and you'll release that. And again, there'll be no inhaling. And when the suction begins there, I'm gonna ask you to make a pretend inhale. And you're gonna do this you know, in your own timing, but what happens is you squeeze, release, pretend inhale, it's pretty quick. Uh, and the pretend inhale, since no air is coming in, you've kind of blocked the throat, the throat diaphragm. That means that your body's going to create this internal vacuum that is really the beginning of Uddiyana Bandha. Let me say that differently, just so we know what the stages are. Exhale suspension, I'm calling exhale suspension when you have not inhaled, but you've relaxed and there's a little suction inside. When you add the beginning of the pretend inhale, you're learning Uddiyana Bandha in this inverted position. And I'm saying that because customarily Uddiyana Bandha is done seated or standing, not in this position that we're going to do it in right now. So let's come to Prasarita Padottanasana, please. So take a wide stance with your hands outstretched in front of you to make it into the pyramid position. The reason the arms are stretched out is that it helps the spine to be more elongated. Your thoracic spine is in extension, not in flexion. And it keeps you from doing too much of a forward bend where you might compromise the ability to feel the Uddiyana Bandha happening. So let's inhale slowly through the nose. And then exhale slowly through the nose. You're going to as complete an exhale as you can do. At the end of that exhale, you'll have squeezed the belly muscles, then release them before making your pretend inhale. And then release the vacuum by pressing the upper abdominal muscles down towards the lower abdominal muscles and inhale smoothly. And we're going to try it about three times. So let's again inhale in your own timing at your own pace. You may again do those sequentially or take a small break between each one. And then walk your hands back towards your hips and please rise up to standing. 
Oh, heel toe, heel toe, come into center, come to mountain pose. As you come to standing, let your arms dangle and find that the possibility of that inner quiet once again. And now come into uh, what we call horse stance. So like you're riding a horse, you bend the knees, turn the toes out a little bit and come down onto your knees with your hands. Let's do the arms are gonna stay straight. And that is because you want the torso to be like dangling down from the shoulders. So your arms are straight, even if your shoulders push up towards your ears. Drop the hips back. When I was first teaching yoga a long time ago at the Multnomah Art Center in Portland, Oregon, one of my students suggested that this was called the Turkish outhouse pose here. And I just remembered him <laughs> this moment. Uh, what we're doing is trying to have no need for the abdominal muscles to hold you up. So that's why you drop your weight back into your heels. And since the torso is a little bit forward, you want the arms to be straight. It's like a little scaffold. And we're gonna repeat the same practice we just did. So we'll inhale through the nose as completely as you're comfortable doing. You exhale out the nose very thoroughly. At the end of the exhale, you'll have squeezed the belly. You'll then relax those muscles before making the pretend inhale. And that pretend inhale will create what we then call more formally, Udi Anabanda. So give it a go. When you experience the bandha and you're gonna to transition to the inhale, you release the, the abdominal muscles, upper abdominal muscles, lower abdominal muscles, and then you can have the inhale come in smoothly without gasping. Let's try it twice more, please. As always, take your time. You might pause between repetitions. You might go sequentially, but it's not required. When you are complete, then come down to a rag doll forward bend. Allow the torso and your head to cascade kind of down like water but make the legs really stable. So it's a trustworthy forward bend. And then walk your hands up to your hips and please rise up to standing. And again, we'll go into mountain pose. So you find your place there and totally relax. And now without distraction, so we can benefit from the experience without distraction, let's come down to a seated position for meditation. So one of the things about Uddiyana Bandha is you get this Apanavayu, Samanavayu up into Vyanavayu. So there's this lift in the chest and the heart. You've increased circulation in the body because you have disseminated it in a different way, a more calibrated way. And then the Uddiyana Bandha is said 
the word Uddiyana means flying upwards. So Uddiyana Banda is said to prepare your mind for energy moving up through Udana Vayu to having a clear meditative capacity for the mind. I'm going to get a little bit warmer. It's chilly in the space because I have the window open for kitten bird viewing there to my right. Okay, so come into your comfortable seat. Rest your hands in your lap. Close your eyes. And welcome the possibility that without any need to breathe on your own, you'll be breathed. So welcome the possibility that you'll sense a little more space between you and your experiences. And that grants us the perspective to see our experiences more kindly, more wisely. Rest in the observing and then move your attention slightly back from observing to simply being the observer. Allow yourself to rest in the reflectivity of the, the seer. So not even so connected to the act of seeing, nor that which you are seeing. We say in the Bhagavad Gita, there is the seer, the seeing, and the seen. I'd like you to rest in the seer.
We'll welcome the possibility of quietude, not identified with what you are sensing in the surround, nor in your thoughts. Please raise your hand to your heart. And appreciate yourself for the dedication you've made here. Thank you for sharing your practice. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. So before you go, thank you again for sharing your practice. As always, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Click like if the practice works for you. If you're interested in yoga teacher training, please leave us a question or comment down below the video or visit the website. The URL is in the description for the class. Thank you so much. And I hope to see you next time. Namaste.